Welcome back to the sound for more channel. Today I have the pleasure to do another tutorial on Step Fully ARP. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. And please do comment, like, because that helps with bringing back more tutorial giveaways, etc. etc. Okay, so Step Poly ARP. It's a very long time that I don't do a tutorial on this fantastic MIDI arpeggiator and modern arpeggiator is a sequencer as well. And it is one of the first app that I actually used when uh, I was working with the iPad. So, um, you know, lots of memories. And uh, we had the recent update and we have a lot of new functionality in it. So this is just a bit of a taster, right? And just uh, um, a video to go back to Step Poly ARP and show you what you can do. So we are inside the UM. We are going to create a MIDI channel and we are going to search for Step Poly ARP, okay? One of the things I really, really like of Step Fully App compared to other new um, apps in iOS is the simplicity of use. Absolutely so simple to use. And now you have things like Clock Divider, which is fantastic. You have the ability, for example, to do custom scale, which is great and it's been vastly announced and you have possibility to do more at events level in terms of randomization as well. Goodness me, there are so many uh, different functions. But let me give you a bit of a reminder of what you can do with Step Polyarp, okay? So, well, first of all, we need an audio channel where we need to have an audio source, another synth, uh, which we can uh, use to produce some sound. So in this case, why don't we load BA1 um, from Baby Audio, which uh, is absolutely a fantastic synth. And we're going to select the preset, a base. Why don't we go for Baby Reese, okay? Which sounds like this. Nice and simple, right? So, we need to connect the two, so we go here and connect it to Step Poly Arp, like so. Now, Step Poly Arp doesn't have a multi output, so you need to go by MIDI channel. So you select none here, and let's ensure that the BA1 receives only on channel number one. So, next, you need to have the keyboard pointing to uh, Step Poly Arp. Now, if we press an order button, or a keys, I should say, on the keyboard. Is pressing, is repeating all these events here for all the grids, right? At what speed? It is here. You can choose the gate, you can choose the grooving, you can go up and down octave, you can change the order, up, down, up and down, etc., etc. By chords, you can do further customization here in terms of grid, eddy, moving, swapping, etc., etc. Now, click and hold here, and we go like so. So we have, when we make the uh, pattern smaller, only these steps, right? So. And of course, if I change note, and you should see the highlights here on the steps, which stop here and then restart. But of course, the object will play all the uh, other steps because I haven't changed for each of the row. Uh, the length of how many steps to play, right? So click here where it says zero and let's ensure that that goes out only at channel number one, okay? At the moment it's set to do relative here, scaled, which is okay and not unit changing zero. This is why it says here uh, zero. So we could um, um, drag and um, if you click when on a grid, you create a step. If you click and move it very quickly, you remove that step, right? So, and if you click, all you need, you have uh, this event edit, which of course you can select delete as well. So let's press again. And you can create some already nice uh, type of groove uh, pattern, right? Now we are on C major scale here, so it is actually observing that scale. So if I press here, E flat or D sharp, same as here, because it is quantizing to scale, which is really great. But of course, you don't have to do that. You can have latch on, which is great. If 
If you want that, you can have in up mode the 40 aspect input and output from your MIDI controller or keyboard. In, in this case, the AUM keyboard, you can have in sequencer mode, where of course it will be driven by transport control, in this case by AUM. Now let's make it a little bit more fun. So let's create another audio channel and let's bring here Hammerhead. And uh, let's get this to be connected, of course, to step poly ARP, but respond only on channel number two. And we disable the, in the internal sequencer here. We lower down a little bit the volume, okay? And then what we do, we go back inside step of poly ARP. We go here where it says uh, minus 12. We set it to send it out in terms of the channel, um, ch channel number two. Then we don't want it scaled. We want to do absolute, so we go by note, and then we start to play around with the notes that we want to be played, right? Let's select C0 for now. And what we do here as well, you can, if you go back here, you can say, uh, fill in every four steps, okay? And it will fill in every four step here, and then we make also these shorter like so. So. So it might not sound now, and that depends on the height here that you have of the note in terms of how it is mapped to um, uh, Hammerhead. So you now start to hear that uh, uh, kick drum. Now let's go forward. We can go here on where it says minus 10. And can we make it absolute, not scale, so you're not constrained by scale. And we go for, uh, uh, why not, uh, D1. Uh, like so, and then what we do, channel two here, yeah, so we'll send media event messages uh, through channel two, and we click here for snare. And now, of course, we need to make also the right length for the pattern, okay? Let's have latch and let's have fun. Already gorgeous, right? So let's continue where it says minus seven here in terms of tuning. Select absolute, no scale. We go down to perhaps uh, uh, D1 sharp, if I remember correctly, uh, like so. Channel number two, fill in every two steps and uh, change also the length here of the pattern. And let's try again. Not quite what I wanted, so let's ensure that uh, the scale probably is around D sharp three, maybe, uh, if I remember the mapping correctly. Yeah, so we have closed hi-hats there. So let's fun, let's have fun again. Nice, right, so let's go back here and click underneath here to duplicate the channel. Okay, and let's have these connected step poly ARP and respond on to MIDI channel number three. Now we go inside here and we choose a different preset. Why don't we go for a plug or something like that? Uh, ARP me up normally sounds really good if I remember correctly. So. We go here and we say channel number three, okay? We'll leave the rest as it is, okay? We just um, uh, change the length here and um, why not let's do um, something uh, like so, perhaps, and let's try. Yeah, okay, that's okay, channel number three here, all right, and change the length of the pattern, perhaps we do something like that. And let's have a little bit more fun again. So, whoop, like so, and why not? We can just fill in as we like. And of course, that depends on the tuning that you have selected here, and if it is relative of absolute to the starting note position.
the moment is using our projector for all these nodes. You can see the movement there, and I'm in our projector mode. But hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can quickly achieve using Step Poly Arp. And remember, you have modulation on the yeah. You can modulate the velocity. You can do further modulation. Act on the pan, the volume, after the touch, pitch bend, and also pattern. And I use these extensively in my first um, uh, days of using iPads and. Uh, in terms of creating songs and changing manually therefore patterns or via also uh, other means okay so it's it's a really a fantastic fantastic rpg to end sequence that i'm sure you have a lot of fun with so just try out okay i hope you enjoyed the short demonstration and reminder of what step poly is major update with a lot of new features i hope you enjoyed see you next time bye